Hello there. It's 20 to 4 on the 27th of Friday, the 27th of December 2019. Um, I wanted to do a video because I've been away for a little while, uh, two, two and a half months. Had a bit of a chest infection and that wasn't good and um, then I had a lot of extra work to do so I couldn't uh, kind of have any rest and recuperate. Anyway, so I wanted to first of all have a little review of what has been done in the last year throughout the videos and also express my um, my gratitude and uh, it's been very nice to have uh, so many people come on board and uh, have their comments and uh, keep on viewing. So I, I feel that I would like to address those, particularly the subscribers that have come on and just give an explanation about why I haven't been here. So first of all, it was uh, I didn't have the energy and it seemed to come to a natural conclusion at the end of Brexit. I did one or two others, so uh, my friend Raphael Ray and uh, may do some more of those in the uh, New Year talks. Um, but the other reason is that um, I, I've done a lot of mundane astrology, political astrology, famous figures and, and things like that. I started off reflecting on the process of signification in astrology. One of the most important things, if not we, the most important principle in trying to look into a horoscope to make sense of it, to bring some interpretation. I covered that in uh, quite a lot of my early video, uh, videos. Signification being what is significant in the chart, what stands out for you. Uh, can you rely upon planetary symbols and placements to actually portray what is actually going on for a person or in the world? It was after I spoke about the, the signification and the basis of it and also the basis of astrology that lies in the imaginative or intuitive, it's an intuitive science. I moved on uh, to discuss Ficino, the ideas of mind and the ideas of imagination and being able to use the imagination through astrology as a medium for um, guidance, if not divination, and uh, to see astrology as a valid knowledge system. Uh, I've also published a number of uh, things on the signs and bits and pieces, on, 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 on a few odd videos. But on from that, I then proceeded to um, try and demonstrate this art of signification in a number of examples. Uh, the first one I chose was Jordan Peterson, who I admire very much and have seen his um, Harvard lectures right back when they first started to come out, 2004, 2005, um, and uh, brilliant they were too in his famous lecture series, Maps of Meaning. And um, so I traced uh, this signification of his Mars opposed Neptune square to Saturn uh, placement over three or four videos just to see how things would pan out. You know, to, 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 to experiment, if you like, with the astrological chart to see if we could see this very powerful T-square of Mars in Taurus opposed Neptune. And I trace that, and square to Saturn, and I trace that in the life of Jordan Peterson and his, his personality and what it might mean underneath. I did a lot of tracing of Mars, what that Mars means, Neptune means, and Saturn and also the sign of Aquarius, Saturn in Aquarius. So we did quite a lot of that in order to, again, certainly amplify on the theme of signification and what this might mean in a natal chart. After that, uh, uh, no one could be um, uh, avoid the Brexit stuff right from last year. Um, I reflected, I think well, one of my first videos was a reflection on the sign of Capricorn and my own impending Saturn return. That I found interesting because it started to talk about Pluto in Capricorn and Saturn in Capricorn. And this eventually led to a few videos on Saturn-Pluto conjunction, but particularly in the lives of many people uh, who have this contacting personal placements in their chart. So I've done a lot of mundane charts, I've done a lot of event charts, um, Brexit votes uh, and so on. All of this really, and I covered Julian Assange as, as well when he got arrested, I did about four or five on those. And of course his pending uh, uh, trial in uh, uh, February 2020, which was foreseen as the exact position when Pluto opposes his Mercury by transit. It's exact there. And then, of course, Saturn will be on it, too. So they'll have this very powerful Saturn-Pluto conjunction opposite his Mercury. 
I then did a little foray into the power of the new moon as a forecasting tool. Astrological forecasting seems to pinpoint particular things and especially emphasizes transits uh, when, it, when the full or new moon degree comes upon a placement in the chart. We looked at a Julian Assange at the eclipse last year in July. Uh, was it the exactly same degree, 10 Cancer 38 on Julian Assange's uh, natal sun in the 8th house. This was destined to be a year of a particular poignancy for him and it's as if the uh, and now he faces his enemy that he's always faced in the flesh as it were. Unfortunately there has been some uh, political machinations is here and I don't think it's too far to say that he's being held more as a political prisoner than anything else. So on from Julian Assange, did more Brexit votes uh, and uh, showing how to um, how to uh, see into them, how to how the symbols sometimes reflect the circumstances or the drama of a particular event. Um, I then went on to do a full fledged horror chart, which was uh, quite a challenge. It was uh, one coming in from uh, uh, are we going to leave on the 31st of October? Um, I decided to do that properly and did five videos showing roughly the process of um, horror astrology and how you might account for it, um, as, uh, how, you, how you might put it into operation. Uh, I did that starting off with the ideas of concepts of Kairos and horror astrology divination and then we led on eventually in video five to the Brexit horror itself. I got that judgment in that chart incorrect. We did not leave on the 31st of October and my judgment was based upon the final aspect, the final um, aspect of Mars which represented Boris Johnson and Jupiter in the 11th house. Anybody that followed that there's a perfection of that uh, trine and uh, they were specifically poignant degrees both in the um, Sagittarius and in the Leo. The uh, the thing I put it out there about the Jupiter is I also indicated on that chart that the Jupiter could be perceived as a future election. In fact, I had an arrow showing election or the will of the people and that perfection of Mars to Jupiter there in the uh, trine did not mean that we left on the 31st of October. But in fact, Parliament broke up. Uh, we then had the beginning of the election campaign. Uh, which eventually did see Boris Johnson as the winner. We traced him uh, via the Ascendant and via Mars in uh, 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 Leo as the victor, as uh, not necessarily of the election, but as the victor overall. And there was a very interesting, rather occult dimension to that chart where it said that the leader of the chart was under the name of Betelgeuse, which turns out, which is a fixed star, which turns out to be the right arm of Orion in the constellations. And I love to say, you know, Boris Johnson is always using this right arm and cutting and pointing and challenging. It, he, he very much seems to be um, a, uh, an expression of that energy because Betelgeuse is the under the armpit of Orion's and it means the coming of the club. I ultimately saw this as a victor, a victor, a victor, um, a victorious uh, for Boris Johnson in his uh, his particular line of uh, political agenda. Uh, the full moons were interesting. I did a little thing onto that to do with Jeffrey Epstein and uh, Merkel and various other things, and I found that technique very interesting, and I still use it. Um, after that, uh, uh, however, I kind of ran, uh, not ran dry, but just ran out of a particular current or a wave of energy of which I'm down now just beginning to pick up. Uh, my chest infection is all but gone and I am ready to begin anew in the uh, in 2020. Of course, there's plenty of stuff to come. Astrology is an ever unwind. It's an unwinding. Uh, it, it just just unravels and unravels and unravels and it just winds on forever. You can apply it to anything. But next year, what I hope to do is a more uh, perhaps psychological astrology how it can refer and particularly the transits, how they relate to periods of development in our, in us, in our lives and how we might be able to use it uh, specifically. 
Uh, I have had, in fact, one request from a subscriber that I do Gemini for the year, like a, a kind of sun sign thing, and that I, I might do that for all the signs. Um, but that's a very general thing. It's newspaper, sun sign column, and I'm trying to get a, a little bit more uh, depth here in this particular channel. Although, um, because Neptune uh, transiting Neptune is in the sign of Pisces, which is square to Gemini. Uh, I might talk a little about that in the new year. I talk, also talk about Gemini. It's a very popular sign at the moment. Donald Trump is a Gemini. Jeremy Corbyn is a Gemini. Boris Johnson is a Gemini. It seems to be that we've had a rather um, a move, a very movable, changeable, flexible, adaptable business. This was all um, shown or foreseen, I think, with the Neptune opposed Saturn in England's chart, the 1066 chart. I did one called England is Leaking, and that's when the, the roof of the Houses of Parliament came, uh, get, got, got to be flooded. And I took that as a kind of outer omen, looked on the 1066 chart and then saw Neptune opposed Saturn. It's as if the the chaos, the... Um, the, the confusion of Neptune. I think that it was certainly to do with a wave or a current of some profound kind in order to follow, if you like, this continual fusion or integration into the EU. Um, it's as if there's, 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 there's some current of energy uh, uh, eventually leading towards the fusion of national identities uh, into a single state. And uh, whilst that may come about perhaps 200 years, as I've said before in one of my videos, I think now people are only just beginning to see that um, what, what identity is. There are certain religions in the world, for example, that still, out of, still seem to live out of the 11th and 12th century. Some uh, fanatics in the Christian tradition, too, have simply uh, accepted the Gnostic Christianity as there's evil and there's good and so on. And that's how the world is divided. All of these systems of um, uh, profound uh, um, an attempt, a, a pro really true profound attempt in the religion to bring the divine into life to bring a, uh, a, an overriding moral principle into life as a way to live. Um, the, these, the, the, the current of that is, is always profound and um, has, has a good root, I think. However, the actual implementation of that has meant that um, people, their own identities, their identities as people, identities as culture or race, um, identity in a family, identity with themselves as a, as a particular thing in society, uh, you know, identity through achievement or career. Identity is not something that's easily given up. In spiritual practice, eventually, identity doesn't mean anything. It's, 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 it's just a kind of vehicle of operations. One's personality and being just a, uh, is, is, is a style rather than something to actually rely on. Uh, but I personally think this Neptunian wave too has brought in the idea that there is a collective humanity. There is a unity consciousness from which to, to, to move towards, but in a political sphere, it's a bit too early. So this transitine Neptune opposed to Saturn, uh, I think confronted us with that. And we saw the Houses of Parliament in a complete disarray. Uh, one side was another side. One person changed parties five times. Um, there was a culling of the old guard. Uh, the government wasn't in power, even though it was supposed to be. You had all kind of unifications, hoping that uh, we might oust this government. Unfortunately, uh, 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 Jeremy Corbyn's own party seemed to be divided in itself, both as about him as a leader and in the, the way that things should go in terms of uh, Europe. So was so were the other parties. Uh, I mean, even uh, the well, one of the ex-leaders of the Lib Dem said we should implement the vote of the 2016 election. This whole massive Neptunian disguise that nobody knew what they were voting for. I mean, the very man himself 
Cameron, David Cameron, who who, who instituted, who, who, who initiated the referendum, told us very firmly in so many speeches that we would be leaving at the end of a two year period by WTO rules if if the vote wouldn't go. He said repeatedly, anybody just needs to go back to that day and, and the consequent interviews that he gave to know exactly what he was talking about. You know, World War Three was going to open up if we voted to leave. Everything was going to happen, uh, um, uh, and and so on. So that's why they they campaign so hard, uh, often with a negative campaign against the Remain vote, uh, against the Leave vote. Um, so, but it was it was very clear we were going to we were going to leave. This was a one time in opportunity, and that David Cameron said he would implement the decision no matter what. And what happened at the end of it, at the end of the vote, he resigned. So it was at that point that I think people really saw through this facade of politicians saying one thing, meaning another or not quite knowing. And political um, obfuscation or uh, being disingenuous or um, what is it, cautious with the truth. I don't know what kind of stuff they do. A friend of mine just bought me a a book called um, Lies of the Land, um, and I'm reading it through right now, it makes an excellent reading. It's all these kind of things that people say just for the, for just for getting through and then they don't really mean it. They have a political agenda and I think this Neptune in Pisces has blurred the truth so much sometimes we don't know what to believe at all. So it is my intention next year to move more into um, a kind of astrology or psychological astrology because I'm a psychotherapist and I often link the two together in my work both with people and uh, in, in periods of self-reflection astrology has often helped so I tend to want to tend to move into that so if there are any of you watching out there that enjoy these videos or would like me to um, explain something or uh, uh, t talk about a specific topic then please get in touch obviously uh, uh, by the notifications or whatever and I'll, I'll attempt to ask ask some questions around my own answer these questions around my own agenda um, I'm a Cancerian if anybody wondered and I rather like to make these things personal and direct as I can even though this medium is one to uh, many uh, uh, talking in the abstract and just get a bit Aquarian and a bit too lofty from time to time. Anyway, look, I wish all of you who are watching a very happy new year and uh, we'll see you then, may even do a video in the next couple of days. So I wait for your response. Thank you all of those people that have um, kindly uh, uh, um, put their uh, subscribed to this channel and I hope that uh, we can we can do some good work in the following year. Cheerio for now.